And welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're here each and every week discussing interesting topics with interesting people. And we have a guy today that knows a lot about one of the giants of industry in Oklahoma City. Yes, we're going to have Tom Price on uh, today to talk about uh, what's going on at Chesapeake Energy. Uh, there's always a lot going on there from the standpoint of its own expansion, its business, and its involvement in uh, cultural and civic activities here in not simply Oklahoma City, but the state. And uh, Tom's going to tell us about what are the newest things going on at Chesapeake. I think it'll be a, a fascinating show. It's a dynamic company, and uh, few know as much about it as Tom Price. He's our guest today on The Verdict, and we'll be right back. In driving rain, blistering heat, and bitter cold, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, Chesapeake drills non-stop for natural gas on American soil. Chesapeake drills more new gas wells than anyone else, and from those wells collects the most drilling information and acquires more 3D seismic images, leveraging every efficiency to improve the odds of finding more natural gas every day with every well we drill. The better job we do of discovering bigger reserves of clean, burning American natural gas, the greater the prosperity of our nearby communities, our state, and our nation. And as long as there are more gas reserves to be found here in the U.S., we will never rest. Chesapeake. Natural gas wins the day. And we're back on The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. We're really pleased today to have back a, uh, a guest that has been with us a number of times before, Tom Price, who is the Vice President of Corporate Development for Chesapeake Energy. Uh, as I have indicated to you in prior shows, Tom uh, was a graduate of the University of Central Oklahoma and the University of Oklahoma and has uh, done uh, graduate work at the American Graduate School of International Management. Uh, he is a board member of the Independent Petroleum Association of America. Uh, he is uh, actively involved in all aspects of uh, what Chesapeake Energy is doing both here and uh, in Oklahoma City and uh, statewide and nationally. And uh, Tom, we're really pleased you'd come back and visit with us again. It's always a pleasure and always stimulating. <laughs> Some companies are not at all active in what goes on in the community. Some companies are very active and Chesapeake kind of uh, is among the leaders in being active. Why does Chesapeake like to be active in what goes on in, in Oklahoma City and the state of Oklahoma? You know, we've got a little um, oh, um, watchword, um, I guess, um, although it's two words, leadership matters. And whether it's in um, our company, whether it's in our industry, whether it's in our community, it always, um, success requires someone getting engaged. And if we can get engaged and um, cast some light on some things that uh, need to be resolved for our city or state to improve, we feel like that's our obligation as leaders and uh, are pleased to do it. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes uh, people may disagree with us, but, but that's fine. If people want to disagree, they've got to stand up and be leaders too. And leadership inspires, leadership encourages, leadership um, should motivate and inspire and um, we think that uh, the people that we want on our campus, the people that we want to be part of our company are going to be people that are going to be willing to engage, willing to try and make uh, the community and the state better. 
Well, it's, it seems to me, Tom, that, that you uh, don't just talk about it, you do it. I know uh, Chesapeake's involved in uh, funding some uh, educational scholarships. Absolutely. For potential leaders. Uh, tell us a little bit about that program and how it's working. We started a, um, let's see, in 2003, a rural scholarship program because all of the money that we invested um, in the state in our drilling program um, was involved or was focused in um, rural parts of the state. And as we did some examination of people, uh, young people, it appeared that they did not um, have the opportunity to go to um, a good four-year school. And there are um, two, obviously, um, great state universities. There are a number of regional universities. And we wanted to make sure that people would have the opportunity to further um, their career and, again, further their impact on local communities by being college graduates. Well, so how does that, how does your program work? Do they apply? Uh... They do apply at, uh, through the school directly. So if, you're, if you live in Weatherford or um, if you uh, live in uh, southeastern Oklahoma, uh, whichever school that you're going to, you would just, um, you just apply uh, through, the, um, uh, through the dean um, of the business school. Uh, and in some cases, we even support programs that are not business oriented. Mm -hmm. Again, it's just critical that we enhance the analytical capabilities of people in our state so they can be better parents, so they can be better leaders, so they can have a better impact on their local communities. Well, put, put some dollar signs by this program. Okay. How much is Chesapeake investing in this scholarship program? Well, um, we just um, engaged in a program uh, recently in um, Arkansas, and that was, I think that put us over $7 million. So um, each year we will, um, let's see, I think somewhere in the neighborhood of half a million dollars to a million dollars in scholarships, um, and those will go um, generally to, to people with business degrees. But um, some of the schools that we are involved in, um, there are um, other, um, other focuses other than just business. And those are need-based scholarships? Yes, they are. Yeah. How many people work for Chesapeake and where do those people live in general? Well, let's see, we've got about 6,000 uh, company-wide wow. um, and I'll just put that in uh, perspective. There were nine um, of us when we started in 1989. Were so, you one of the nine? Yeah, it's just an incredible the immortal thing. Nine? It, yeah, it's just an amazing thing to, to think about uh, the passion that those, um, that those uh, initial people had. Obviously, um, Aubrey was the key focus, but um, all of the people that have been with us for um, uh, a long time had a tremendous amount of tenacity, passion, and, uh, and commitment. Um, we've now got about uh, 2,400 here in Oklahoma City. Um, there's uh, right at 3,600 um, in the state of Oklahoma and uh, about 2,400 that are located outside the state. Now, we've had Aubrey on uh, uh, fairly recently, right. uh, last several months, and he was uh, telling us about why Chesapeake focuses on domestic uh, production as opposed to foreign uh, production. Are your employees pretty much all within the United States? They are, exclusively. We are all domestic and all onshore. Hmm. Uh, Talk about your campus. Uh, I notice anybody that drives by 63rd and Western can see the, the beautiful campus you have, and I like the phrase or the word campus to be uh, used because right. that's what kind of what it looks like. Uh, is that uh, pretty well done? Are you still expanding? Uh, here we are in December yeah. uh, of uh, 07. Are you finished or are you still going? Oh no, no. Um, you know we've got a lot of years of, uh, of growth planned ahead. We've got about 800,000 square feet that are on the campus now or near the campus. Um, and um, we'll, let's see, we've got about another 400,000 square feet that are in the process of being built right now. I think the one thing that people uh, will notice um, this time of year is um, the um, lighting that we do along Western. Um, it, uh, um, we typically, um, engage um, the uh, or, or initiate the lighting um, about the first of November so this time of year um, around Christmas people would uh, be, be very excited I think to uh, look and see the lighting uh, as uh, it illuminates both sides of Western there from about 59th up to 63rd 
and also including the Nicholas Hills Plaza now as well. I wanted to ask about the uh, how you acquire new employees. Do you go out recruiting for new employees? Do you do you wait for them to come knock on your door? Uh, how does that work? There, there's really uh, not much that is uh, reactive about us. Um, <laughs> uh, no, we we are pretty proactive about it. In fact, uh, we uh, we have got uh, a number of different people that are um, very aggressively going out looking for the best and brightest of the, not only um, in Oklahoma but in Texas and uh, uh, we're active in um, 16 states drilling wells now so um, we are um, we are really pushing to try and find the best people that can add value um, to our company and that we can add value to their lives. People look at energy in the 21st century and so many different things are interrelated the, the, the oil in the Middle East the natural gas and coal in the United States as well as oil how does it all mesh together and where is this headed? I think it, energy is so powerful and people know that economies can't roll without it. How is it all going to shake out or just going to continue to evolve? You know, um, I, if, I, if I knew the answer to that, I'd be a hedge fund manager. Um, <laughs> but um, I think the, the, the answer is that natural gas is certainly going to continue to be valued, uh, I think, more highly in the future. Um, it burns so much more cleanly than, um, than coal does. Um, it is, uh, it's domestic, so we don't have to import it from uh, areas of the world that don't have our best interests in mind. Um, I think that uh, Oklahoma is positioned so well, um, I think, to respond to the needs of, of the nation in terms of their energy requirements that uh, I, I don't think, and, and I went through the period in the early 1980s where we had such a boom um, but I don't think boom is the right term anymore. I mean, this is really something that is going to it's going to last a long time. Um, I think that uh, we've got people um, around the country who are just now really beginning to understand um, why natural gas is so important, how cleanly it burns, and the fact that they can use it in their cars. Chesapeake Energy's Tom Price is our guest today on the Verdict. We'll be right back with more. Shining is taking responsibility. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma, we know managing your health care can be overwhelming, and it's our job to help you meet the challenge. By guiding, supporting, and showing the way, we encourage you to gain control. Because we believe the best tool we can give you is the confidence to take charge. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oklahoma, shining through. Okiwani is an Indian name for a place where children play. When we obtained the camp, we found a lot of oil debris left in the woods. We saw a commercial about how the oil and natural gas industry cleans up old oil well sites. We called the OERB and they agreed to remove tons of concrete and steel. It didn't cost us a thing. Thousands of children have left their footprints on this land. Thanks to the oil and gas industry, they will for a long time to come. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. We're back on The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. And Kent, where do you want to go from here with Chesapeake's Tom Price? Well, I want to follow up on something that we talked about in the first segment, and that was kind of the recruitment sure. that, you, uh, that you do for new employees. Uh, from the standpoint of uh, college graduates, mm -hmm. what would be the top three majors that Chesapeake could be looking for? Um, engineering, certainly. Uh, petroleum engineering um, would be number one. Uh, number two would be uh, geologists. 
or geophysicists somewhere in the geosciences. Um, the next would probably be um, accounting, um, legal, um, land. I mean, those uh, those would be the top five. Really. Yeah, because Aubrey, who's a, Aubrey McClendon, who's right. the chairman, uh, had an accounting background. It is. As opposed to an oil and gas. Accounting and history, in fact. Yeah. yeah. Tom, domestically, where is the natural gas that we believe is still left in the continental United States? What, what parts of the country? It, you know, it is amazing that it continues, as technology continues to expand, um, and as prices and demand continue to go up, um, we are finding natural gas in places that we never thought possible even five years ago. So. Um, By going it, deeper or in different parts of the country? It, it, different types of formations even. Um, we're, in, in western Oklahoma, Chesapeake continues to be a leader going deep. Um, we continue to be a leader in areas that uh, horizontal drilling technologies are used. But what we're finding for the first time is that in shale type formations that in the past um, would be looked at as maybe cap rock that you might look below the shales for uh, for hydrocarbons. Now we're actually looking in the shales themselves. Mm -hmm. um, actually in southeastern Oklahoma, in southern Oklahoma, um, w there are shale formations that could change the um, complexion of that uh, of that part of the state, uh, provide um, capital investment that has never been there before, provide incredible um, high quality jobs. Um, what leasing is going on in that area now. Um, three, four thousand dollars an acre for some of those mm. uh, prize leases. So um, it, it's just amazing um, how technology continues to respond and help us extricate natural gas from, um, uh, r from reservoirs that we would have never expected before. People know in general that if they hear the price of oil has gone up, it's probably good for the producers of natural gas. Why would that be? Why are they not why are they interrelated? Well, it, you know, something, uh, unfortunately, they're not um, as interrelated as, uh, as they might be on a BTU equivalent content, that is, heating um, uh, generation content. Um, uh, oil today, somewhere in the $80 to $100 area, um, depending upon the day. Uh, natural gas selling at about um, $7 a thousand cubic feet. Um, it, on, a, a, on a heating equivalent basis, it should be selling um, for a six to, on a six to one ratio basis. So you should be seeing natural gas selling for um, you know ten to to fifteen dollars a thousand cubic feet. So it's a bargain now. It, it, it really is a bargain, especially again as clean as it burns. Yeah. On, on any given day, and just give me an estimate uh, about how many. Uh, Rigs or wells would you be would Chesapeake be drilling? Uh, well, any um, given day, about 150 to 160. And let me put that into perspective. Wow. Um, um, it, across the United States, um, Exxon, Chevron, uh, BP, Shell, and ConocoPhillips, the five super majors, together account for about 80 rigs. So Chesapeake is almost double that of the five super majors. That, that would probably be a trivia question that nobody in the audience would get. Well, that's the kind of answer I was yeah, hoping to get. Yeah. I didn't know what it was, yeah. but I knew it'd be good. Let me follow up on that. About how many wells today uh, are producing, uh, in at least in whole or in part, uh, for Chesapeake? Gosh, thousands. Um, we probably have about, um, oh, interest in probably 30,000 wells across the country. So um, we would drill about 500 new wells a year. Which would um, uh, which would account for about uh, say 25 percent of our production um, each year. So new gas is um, is what everybody is is looking for because it creates new jobs, pays the highest level of taxes, and uh, uh, is just what is the locomotive that drives the Oklahoma economy. Because there's so much domestic natural gas, it would seem as if the United States is going to be better off if we can find more and more uses for it. I think you're exactly what, right. What uses are out there that people are just kind of talking about that we probably need to pursue more vigorously? Well, um, certainly um, natural gas fueled vehicles is one. Um, that was something that was looked at about uh, 20 years ago. Um, and the infrastructure development that needed to go along with it really was not capitalized as, as well as it should have been. Um, and it's because, um, you know, we have a tendency to be rather myopic as a 
society and when gas prices dropped and oil prices dropped, we said, hey, um, you know, let's, uh, let's do something else. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, that really is, I think, the wave of the future. It would allow Oklahoma natural gas um, to be used in fueling vehicles all over the country. Um, and there are parts of the country, as you know, that are very, very concerned about their emissions. California would be number one. And uh, Oklahoma natural gas is the answer to that. Mm -hmm. Because it's a cleaner burning Absolutely. fuel. Absolutely. You know, natural gas gets lumped into that fossil fuel along with coal and oil. But I know it's, it's one of Chesapeake's messages is that, that, that probably shouldn't be lumped in with those two, especially environmentally. A absolutely. I mean, there's just no comparison to how cleanly it burns. And in addition, and I think most of your viewers will be interested in the fact that um, natural gas will cost about half of what gasoline is selling for. With gas, uh, gasoline at the pump selling, um, you know, er, let's call it around $3 yeah. um, a gallon. Natural gas would be a bargain, $1.40, $1.50. Well, if somebody wanted to buy a natural gas car today, could right. they buy one? Well, they really, they really can't um, buy one um, directly, to my knowledge. Um, uh, Honda's got some, um, has got some used cars out there, but we're working actually with, uh, um, with a, a publicly traded company called Clean Energy. It's a company that uh, Boone Pickens is uh, heavily involved in. Um, it is really the one that is the, um, the first mover on trying to focus people's attention on burning clean um, natural gas in their vehicles. About 30 seconds left, Kent. What do you see on the horizon for Chesapeake five years, 10 years out? I see us continuing to focus on things that are gonna make a difference in the lives of Oklahomans. And I would, I, I'm gonna stick a plug in here for um, a group that I think is doing a lot of good things, and that is Smart Start. Um, it's a group that's focused on trying to ensure that young children are prepared to learn when they come to school. There's nothing more important for this state, there's nothing more important for this country, in fact, um, than children being prepared to learn properly when they come into school. Well, that'll have to do it. Tom Price right. with Chesapeake Energy. Tom, thanks for coming on The Verdict. We really appreciate yeah, thank it. You, thank you, Tom. Thank you, as always. Kent and I'll have a final word after this. Good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. We're back, wrapping up a show that uh, we visited with Tom Price of Chesapeake Energy. Boy, they're doing lots of things. They really are. It's, a, uh, it's amazing to me to hear the number of wells that they're drilling, the number of employees they have, the expansion project they have. But when you got right down to it and we ask him what, what's on the future, what does Chesapeake want to do better than they've been doing in the past, and his answer wasn't in the natural gas industry, it was children. Mm -hmm. Chesapeake wants to help children get a good start. Uh, and uh, we think that uh, that's an awfully telling comment that shows their community spirit. They and, uh, you know, other companies out there too, but Chesapeake's right there near the top mm -hmm. with companies that are getting involved in this community and in this state and certainly doing more than their share. We have uh, some website information if you'd like to go check out Chesapeake's website. It is chesapeakeenergy.com. We also have a website for this show. It's theverdict.tv. You can go there and tell us about a show you'd like to see on a future edition of The Verdict. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next week on The Verdict.
The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.